instead of to the land trust, whatever your, uh, your option is. That, that's a, essentially a highlight of the project. Altogether, there's about 20 lots. Uh, three of them would be served off Two Lights Road and the balance uh, through Broad Cove. Well, that's, a, that's an overview of where the project stands. The developer, uh, Peter Kennedy uh, of the Greater Portland Development Company, or something like that. And one of these development uh, company names is here, as well as uh, council representing uh, Mr. Kennedy's corporation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. McGuck. Any comments? Mr. Kennedy, is there anything that you wish to add? Uh, no, Mike did a great job. However, I do feel that if this gravel access road of 700 feet here, this portion would be paid is to be paid and uh, accepted by DEP. Uh, I think their position would be uh, better changed if the town then owned the right of way and not me. I don't think they're going to approve my paving that strip. Uh, I've, I've tried for almost <coughs> nine months now uh, to do just that. And the final order, as it was written, was it was to be gravel because of uh, wetland impacts. Um, and that's been their position. I, I do feel that once the, if the town were to accept these roadways and the town owned in fee this 50-foot right-of-way and then went to the DEP, they would be in a far better position to get that road paved. I would pay for the paving, but I do not feel that the DEP uh, I'm not optimistic about the DEP giving me permission to pave those roadways. Even if it were conditioned acceptance, that that would be the only way the town would accept them? Uh, you feel we'd have better leverage Their position town? is that there are many, many, many roads in the state that are gravel. Because the, uh, Cape Elizabeth does not have uh, equipment to maintain gravel road, they don't feel that's a uh, real hardship. They should come to our budget process. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to get into a debate with Mr. Kennedy, and you know, I, he, he's really been put through the ringer on this project that, through the many different regulatory boards. Uh, however, you know, it's it's my sense that, particularly for the maintenance reason, it's very important to try to get this road paved. Reading the DEP order, essentially the only reason they give for for uh, wanting a gravel road is that it will maintain the rural character of the area. Uh, you know, when you're building 20 homes on large lots, you know, adjacent to a, you know, another residential issue, pardon my English, I think, you know, the DEP's view is, is really a bunch of crap. Uh, they, uh, you know, the, the rural character, you know, is not going to go up or down based on whether or not it's a gravel road or a paved road. And uh, I very much think that, uh, you know, with the weight of the council perhaps behind this, the, you know, I, I've gotten a little bit of sense that, you know, that, that, the, that the DEP might be willing to concede on this point. And if not, you know, I, I again reiterate that, uh, you know, I, I would bring this back to the council and very regrettably and uh, with uh, much disappointment recommend that uh, it be uh, accepted as gravel, but I would hope to be able to give it one last try with the weight of the council behind me. Councilor Kramer. Well, I would also think, <clears throat> in a sense, uh, Mr. Manager, wouldn't this be a, an example of an unfunded mandate? I mean, in a sense, from the, uh, the legislature made a big point last year about uh, not wanting to uh, perform these behaviors in the state. Uh, if indeed we don't have the, uh, the situation in Cape Elizabeth where other gravel roads uh, do exist, and it, it clearly is going to cost us uh, an, ex an excess amount of money to maintain it. Isn't this an unfunded mandate from the DEP? You know, I think that's one argument you, you could use. I, I should point out we do have a, a road grader uh, that is uh, now 24 years old uh, that we do not plan to replace because of the very minimal use we get of it. A uh, new road grade is uh, probably cost now up around $150,000. Uh, so we don't want to get into the business of, of maintaining additional gravel roads. But I think the, the point you bring up is one that, that could be brought back to the DEP. Councilor Amaro. Uh, what other hardships are there to having a gravel road? It, it's essentially the issue of maintenance. 
And what do you, I don't know much about maintaining gravel roads. What else do you need to maintain a gravel road the besides this road? You need a lot of patience from residents and people who live in the area during the, this, the mud season. Uh, you need, uh, you know, that that's essentially it, maintenance. And, uh, you know, the concern is, is in fact that road going to be in good maintainable shape so when the fire truck or the rescue needs to go through there, that, that the road is in good shape. You know, people keep telling me that accidents don't happen, that, you know, uh, that I'm whistling Dixie, that I shouldn't be concerned about this. But I think if, if you look in this immediate area, within the last two years, we had a fatal fire on Hunts Point Road that blocked traffic. We had an accident on New Year's Eve just almost across from where the Two Lights Road's going to come out that, uh, you know, was off into the field, but I, I wasn't down there that night, but certainly probably blocked traffic. Uh, we had uh, a windstorm this past summer that cut off access to Hannaford Cove Road entirely for about three hours during the evening. Uh, these things do happen, and I, I think that uh, the moment ought to be seized when we, we, when we have a opportunity uh, to address a public safety issue like this and uh, try our darndest to, uh, to provide for those future uh, events that, that may occur. Well, what kind of delay would this cause to have to go back to the DEP again to plead this issue? I've been arguing this point with Mr. Kennedy over the phone probably three or four times uh, over the last few days and uh, Mr. Kennedy, I don't wish to speak for him, but uh, he's not at all happy with my position. Uh, he made it fairly clear to me, and uh, I have said to him, and I, I would like to honor it, that you know the town would immediately approach the DEP in the next few <coughs> days and uh, do everything we can to get a decision out of them uh, so that this issue, if, if it's not resolved to the town's favor, uh, by the DEP could then come back to the council next month. So, you know, we're really looking at it from uh, this, the 14th of January to the 11th of February. The decision is being made at a staff level, so it's not, you know, as if we have to wait for a board meeting or anything like that. I, I see this issue as, as being twofold. Number one, public safety issue, <clears throat> and not having a more secure access for emergency vehicles. But also, the town set standards for roads, and that this would be a bad precedent to start accepting gravel roads that don't meet our basic standards that we have in our ordinances. Um, so I, I, I found it that I couldn't vote for this the way it's presently being presented as a gravel road. I don't know how any of the rest of you feel. Any other comments? Councilor McLaughlin. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Just for you, Mr. Kennedy, I realize that you right now must feel like you're being caught between the town and DEP. That's not an uncommon situation for a developer to find himself or herself in, which I'm sure you're also aware of. And that's just the way the game is played, primarily. I cannot support a conditional approval of a gravel road. It does, it's not in keeping with the way this town operates. The DEP statement in number 15 under wildlife and fisheries says that proposing that roadways which can be gravel in compliance with all relevant town ordinances will be gravel. Well, as a town ordinance in ordinance section 17 that talks about maintenance issues, and I think that's one ordinance issue that the town can go back to the DEP on. It's 1741. I can't tell you more about it, but I've got my book with me if we need it. Um, that is a major issue. I'm very willing to be very adamant with DEP about this. They talk about rural character. Rural character is not defined by the composition of your road materials. Rural character is defined by the amount of density of your development. <coughs> We do not have town-approved roads that are gravel, but I believe in a number of sections of this town, we still maintain rural character because of the density that we have. Um, there's a comment 
in a there's been a comment by the town engineer that it's conceivable more than conceivable probably probable that construction of a gravel road would require more, a deeper base material to handle emergency vehicles than a paved road will that's going to be greater disturbance of the wetlands i think that's another point we take back to dep it's an engineering quality that i don't know that they have looked at um, primarily because the comments the dep is working on here come from inland fisheries and wildlife i would doubt that they had any evaluation of the engineering properties and the disturbance you're going to do on a gravel road construction versus a paved road construction. We're looking at two and a half inches thickness of pavement. That's the least we require in this town. It's for the minor road construction standards. I just really disagree with DEP on this. And I hope we're not losing sight of the fact that we're being asked to conditionally accept two gravel roads here. The 18-foot wide emergency access drive in the lower part, we're also being asked to conditionally accept an 18-foot wide gravel road in the upper part. Do you want to point hmm, out where that is? So. Uh, these are paved roads. Yeah, now finish between those two culverts. This, that. this is paved up until the point of the driveway. You know, and where's the gravel? The gravel, there, there's, they aren't going to be gravel. They're going to be paved, like driveways, meeting the public access waiver standards in the ordinance. Are you going to be paved between the extension of Channel View and of Cove View cul-de-sacs? No. no. And that will not be an emergency access road either. This, is, this drawing is a little confusing in that this shows a 25-foot pedestrian easement that runs all the way out to two lights. That's not a gravel road. That Somewhere in the DEP. Oh, well, wait a minute. I know. It's in here. An 18-foot gravel road with no shoulders will extend from the cul-de-sac at the end of Co Cove View Road to the cul-de-sac at the end of the Channel View Road extension in Phase 2. That's an inaccurate statement. Um, would somebody inform DEP that that's an accurate place? <laughs> yeah. They make is, mistakes. Is, this okay. on the final, is that on the final order or the draft order? It's dated... Signed by Dean Marriott. That's the final order. That's the final, final order. order. Um, yeah. <laughs> you help prove a point. Well, there's <laughs> Maybe a, there's everybody's a, favor here. There, it's, uh, the, uh, I don't have the uh, order in front of me, but the, the way you read it, there is an existing uh, pathway between those two roadways. But it's not going to be an 18-foot wide gravel roadway. Well, that's DEP's operating under a misconception. That's one that we know of. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Let me get off the roadways with you for a moment. Um, are you proposing any drainage easements to be <coughs> approved and accepted by the town? Yes, I am. Where, can you show me where those are? Drainage easement uh, here, 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 here. That's it. Are there any mechanical structures within those easements? Only culverts in the road and then uh, a pipe for a certain distance as per Bob Hunter's direction and then they become, uh, you know, the open drainage. Okay. So we have no weirs now that we know what weirs are. <laughs> we don't have, any, don't have one again. Okay, because that's something that I didn't see a lot of discussion about in the staff memo. That's why I wanted to make sure we know that that's something, another <coughs> public improvement that we would be voting conditional acceptance of. Um, on the open space that you're proposing to be turned over for public use, I've been confused. I've seen somewhere in one of the pieces of correspondence that it's proposed to be turned over to the cons you have a proposed easement to the Conservation Commission. In another piece of written material, it's proposed on the plans, in fact, it's proposed to go to the land trust. I'm wondering if that has been settled yet. It's been, uh, I don't know if it's been settled. I have offered the both parcels jointly to the land trust and conservation commission to see where their wishes are with restrictions, principally no wheeled vehicles allowed on the pedestrian easements as shown on the plan. 
uh, a conservation commission uh, has written the planning board in his agreement with that proposal and the land trust wants to work with uh, the conservation commission uh, they want to work together on this because I guess there's been some recent uh, controversy that uh, many of the lands have been going to the land trust not the conservation commission so I've basically said conservation commission land trust here are the two pieces I'm conveying why don't you work it out between you and we'll uh, give it to uh, either or or both okay that presents a problem for me as a counselor if I'm being asked to give conditional approval of acceptance and I don't know if it's going to a public entity meaning the conservation it's going to be going to the town of Cape town Elizabeth or to the, a private entity which is the land trust well, that's, that's a good point. The, uh, I was under the personal impression that the uh, land trust was part of the Conservation Commission when we started this process, but now they are not. There are a lot of the same players. They're the same players, it's right. It's very so, confusing. So You're not my, the only uh, confused person. My conversations with Peter Rand and uh, Bill Wadman of, uh, in December was that uh, let, let's see if either one has an interest. For instance, the land trust initially had a bigger, a larger interest in this piece and the Conservation Commission had a greater interest in that piece. So <laughs> <laughs> I was asking them to decide what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And they haven't decided yet. Well, Bill Wadman wrote and said that uh, he's in agreement with the concept and they would work it out between the land trust and themselves. And again, they are the same players. But they're different entities, entities in that one's correct. public and one's private. Um, there are <coughs> excuse me so it brings up enough a number of unresolved questions and I'm not sure I would want to I don't know if I can give conditional approval maybe but I would be more comfortable if some of those questions were answered before I gave an approval for this is there the same kind of situation with the proposed pedestrian access easements between something going to the land trust and something else going, another part of it going to the Conservation Commission? Well, the, the, I don't know, the, the issue or the problem lies in that the Conservation Commission, uh, in uh, <coughs> trying to continue the green belt, is desirous of a pathway from along this line, along here, and then through here, connecting into the Catholic Church property and then out to Two Lights Road, which I said, yes, I would be willing to convey you that, either the land and fee or the pathway as an easement, uh, which they have accepted that concept. Okay. And that would go along with the <coughs> Conservation Commission being more interested in the upper, on what I'll call the upper. That's correct. Part, the phase so two the green belt, they can continue this green belt mm -hmm. out here and then through the Catholic Church now, through the subdivision I think is called Spinnaker Heights, which they already have an easement. Right. So that green belt would be uh, continued on through. Just a very note, a side note. Have that show up darker on your plans because it's I know, hard I did to not read. print through. <laughs> I didn't spend a bit of time looking That's at your That's right. It's very faint, today. unfortunately. <laughs> that one, we, we that wasn't easy to that. pick out, <laughs> especially if you're in a hurry. Um, A, condition, a question to the manager. You mentioned a condition of approval. You mentioned a couple of conditions of approval. Um, one being that phase one be constructed first. Is this something you're asking the council to deal with or is this something you're going to propose to the planning board? I don't know how appropriate it is for the council to make conditions of approval. You're agreeing to accept the public improvements. Uh, I think in, in doing that you're looking at the entire roadway network and the other items that that are before you for for final acceptance you know i i think you know the council in looking at the public safety and other issues which which you ought to look at uh ought to be looking for some sort of a guarantee that yes in fact that emergency road is going to be built so uh you know what i would suggest is uh you know if you make that as a condition of approval then mr kennedy would take that back to the planning board when he approached them uh, for final approval and uh, that would be part of what goes back to them under this provision of the subdivision regulations uh, he has to provide written evidence that you're willing to accept the public improvements the, the easements and uh, the rest of the project 
um, and that would be a condition that you, you would provide back to them. Okay, I personally, I imagine the rest of the council also want to be sure that we act as the council and not as the planning board. That's why I want to be cautious in that. That kind of condition I would be in favor of. I think this is what the town is very interested, <coughs> excuse me, in obtaining is this emergency access way and a condition, you know, maybe within a time frame and certainly saying that prior to the issuance of any building permits for the lots that that roadway be constructed. Is well, something it's, along. it's actually more than the roadway. I intend to bring the water line from Two Lights Road all the way into Winding Way because this entire Broad Cove neighborhood is served by one water line coming down Broad Cove Road. And if that ever got interrupted, there's no water anywhere throughout the whole neighborhood. So first off is to bring the water line down to Winding Way. That, I feel, is far more important than the emergency access road, but I will be doing both simultaneously first. That's good. Okay, we can approve this in segments. Right. If, if we desire to um, accept drainage easements this evening and whatever other items or um, not accept the road unless it's going to be paved, we can have several different motions accepting different items. We don't necessarily have to do this as one. So, Councilor Jordan. Yes, just a couple of comments. I agree with Mr. Kennedy 100% as far as the water main. I think that's very important and it needed to be done years ago. And I'm glad to see that hopefully that it will be done now. As far as the road goes, I am in agreement with what Amanda had to say about it being paid because I think the maintenance on it through the winter and what have you, and I presume it's going to be plowed, snow removal and what have you during the winter, even though it has the gates up there. And it, does with the freezer and thawing get uh, messy, rutted, and what have you, when there is a certain amount of maintenance there. And also in the summer months, I presume the wind blows down there and it's, it's pretty dusty now and then. And I think somebody is going to have to really use Delta more to be paid. And this is the maintenance part of it. What I would like to see, and I would like to see the project go forward, is can the town go to the DEP and try to get this paid without holding Mr. Kennedy up for another six months? That's what I would like to know. I gave the assurance earlier that I would do everything I could to get a decision out of the DEP so that if it was unfavorable, the council could revisit the issue at your February 11th meeting. Now, it, it's, the problem is with this whole thing, we're, we're walking a fine line on, you know, if we push too much, the whole development could collapse, and we're never going to get a road out of Broad Cove in any form. And, you know, we're, we're walking a tightrope on this, on this particular issue. And, uh, you know, I, I really, you know, I, as I've said, I really don't like the plan, but at the same time, <coughs> Um, you know, I think it's the best that, that can happen uh, with all the regulatory agencies involved. Madam Chairman, I would hope with the dearth of development projects in the state at this point, and certainly in the southern part of the state, that DEP is, if anything, underwhelmed with a workload right now and would be able to give this very prompt attention if we, if we do send it back to them. They've been actually, you know, in spite of all my comments about the DEP, they have been willing to meet with us. Sure. In fact, I asked to meet with them once, and we ended up with the head of the Land Bureau, the deputy head of the Land Bureau, the person overseeing this project, the person uh, from the Resources Protection Act section. And, uh, you know, they're giving us the time of day, uh, if, if, if nothing else. So uh, I would expect, uh, you know, at the very least, we can get a decision out of them. But uh, I can't make any assurances on what that decision might be. Billy went over once. Uh, met with them early on, uh, went up to Augusta once and met with them, and uh, at least they'll meet with us. Maybe with your early <coughs> comment, if it gets printed, that we might not be able to get ahead of the list. The reporter wasn't in the room at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but the cameras are here. Council McLaughlin. Question, Mr. Kennedy. Did the, you have preliminary subdivision approval from our planning board? Yes, right? I do. When did you receive that? In August. August, okay. 
Did the planning board... It might, be, it might have been before. <laughs> it's, it's been a long <laughs> process. I really appreciate that. Did the planning board indicate any approval or give you comments about the gravel composition of the road material? Um, I don't recall the gravel composition other than that their preference was for emergency access road only. So they did not get into a discussion of gravel as, versus as pavement? As the surface of the, of the roadway, because it was proposed as a through paved road at the time, which I was certainly willing to construct. The DEP through the gravel in on us at sort of at the last moment. Okay, so our planning board was looking at a paved road. That's correct. Through there. So the gravel is all new material. That's correct. New to them. Okay. The planning board was actually at that point looking at a paved road off the end of Fence Point Road. That's correct. They were looking at a paved road coming through here. Yeah. This plan should make more people happy with the exception of a few on uh, one way. It, it has a negative effect on far fewer residences. That isn't a double name. Do I have a motion from some someone? Do we have any more questions of Mr. Kennedy? I don't know that it does, Mr. Kennedy, any good for us to give partial conditional approval tonight. My understanding is he does not get on t back on the planning board agenda until he has conditional ap approval for the streets and the drainage easements and the open space and anything else he needs from us. So we can just um, delay it until next month? Is that right? No, that's, there, are, there are a number of issues that the town planner field uh, currently holds up Mr. Kennedy from returning to the planning board agenda. Um, unfortunately, it's another one of these catch-22 situations. Uh, you know, he, he needs this before he goes to the planning board, but then again, he's probably not going to get through the planning board in one evening either, uh, if, if past practice is any indication. So, uh, you know, my sense is, is, is that the planner would not hold this from the board simply for this issue, although the final group could not be granted until the council took final action. And the deadlines differ quite variedly. And were I to get DEP approval of a paved road surface in the middle of February, which I can live with, that puts me off yet another month for the planning board. And that I, I, I just, it's, it's a snowballing effect. I, I can't live with it. That's why I'm, I'm certainly willing to live with a month with a DEP, that, you know, uh, but six months is, uh, which I'm fearful of, is, uh, would be devastating. If I may, Madam Chairman, to move this along, I've been trying to figure out just how to put together a motion enabled to hold the gravel over the pavement in abeyance until after we meet with the DEP so Mr. Kennedy could move forward. Uh, would that have to be a two motion type view? Does anybody have any suggestions? It's almost three if you want to consider the the open space and easements, if <coughs> now that we know that there, as was originally stated in, I think it was a letter from the DEP saying they were going to be given to the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust, and now we're hearing that possibly some of it will be going to the town. Um, so do you see this as three basic, three separate items? I haven't a clue whether it's three separate motions or anything, <laughs> but I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Kennedy to <laughs> uh, but it, it, it'll tie in somewhere along the line. Uh, question, two questions. Hunts Point originally when that was proposed, okay, continuing the roadway through that way, why was that abandoned? Was that a planning board decision, a DEP decision, or a development? A, that was basically a DEP decision because, because this, this alignment does not impact it's any okay. wetlands. Okay. This does. Okay. Uh, second question. Originally, when you proposed the subdivision, you wanted a full-size road, normal traffic can flow from any direction. 
Or did you not want the full road? access road? Yes. Okay. Full access road without gates, etc. Without gates, pavement, just leading all the roads to get to your development. That's yeah. correct. Because originally I came this evening and said, "No, I'm opposed to this because I don't like the gates." Blah blah blah. But I don't want to play off Peter as being the the bad guy in this because the DEP is. And I'm sorry, but I've dealt with him in another committee here, and. Uh, the, the motion that I'd make to make it simple is to approve everything, but fight like <coughs> heck uh, the DEP to see our way to get that road paved, etc. I mean, in other words, as Michael mentioned, it's not a great package, but it's something. And then we as a town entity should pursue our rights and not hold up the developer. No, I mean, I'm not trying to play off anyone against one another, but I think the DEP is the one that's messing around with what our total objective is. Well, Mr. Kennedy seemed to be agreeable to Michael's um, working with him this month to get the DEP to approve. In other words, if you accepted the roads in a paved condition, and then uh, with the understanding that there's in a month's time we get an answer from DEP, I can live with that because um, I'm not optimistic that we can get an answer out of them, but Mike seems to be more uh, optimistic than I, but I'll fight tooth and nail uh, right along with him to get a paved road and see if we can convince the DEP staff person, look, it's the, it's the town council's uh, wish, desire, and for the good of the town that that road be paved. And I've uh, done some preliminary research and my findings are that a paved road has less of an impact than a gravel road on their precious wetlands. Right. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just the engineering. Yes. No, I, I just wanted to make a comment only because all us brought it up. But I mean, they're all saying this wetlands and everything. Yet in the DEP's report, it says the proposed project has been reviewed by the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. In its comments. They state that they found no records of any known deer wintering areas, map wetlands, or found no records of any uh, or other special wildlife habitats associated with this site. That the DEP says that the impacts on wildlife and adjacent wetlands. I mean, who's who? That's what. I'm just sorry. Well, could I have a motion then? Do do we want to approve accepting these uh, public roads with the page? emergency road with these four conditions that Michael proposed and the pedestrian easements and the drainage easements this evening. We went back around in circles. Councilor Jordan. I questioned to Mr. Kennedy before I okay. move that motion, which I, I agree with it. If we hold it up for a month, what does that do? If we just table this for one month, what does that do to you? That cost me two months. That will cost you two months. So therefore, that what we should do is approve everything other than the road paving or gravel do in order for you to move forward. That, w that would be very helpful to me. Yes. Jane. Uh, I think that we ought to go ahead and <coughs> approve everything, including the road, the emergency road, as a paved road. I think that gives us a lot of leverage in working with the DEP. If if we don't get a positive response uh, by our next meeting, then we'll have to address just that one item. But we will have given approval, conditional approval to everything else. Is that your motion? Yes. I'll second it. Mr. McGovern. The one thing I'm unsure of, and I don't know if the clerk is sure for the record, is whether or not you are proposing for the uh, open space and the pedestrian access easements to go to the land trust of the town or to a combination. Well, we're talking about conditional approval at this time. I would say to go to either as, as to be worked out between the two bodies. Or, or to both. And is the, does your motion include these, um, these four conditions? The conditions that, that Michael uh, read to us in, in his recommendation. I'd like to hear the conditions yes. again. I was going to ask the clerk to read the motion. Can I just make one, <laughs> ask one question before she does that? Yes, I'm, while she's looking it up. I'm still a little bit um, confused about, you know, this Section 18 open space, and I think it's unfortunate, Peter, that only recently, because there is such an overlap of uh, members of the Conservation Commission who 
perhaps maybe all of them are members of the land trust, that we have this confusion. Um, because I know for a fact that some neighbors um, were very interested in part of that open space perhaps being used for some kind of a park. And I'm not sure that that would be compatible with the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust as much as it would be if it was town-owned property. Is there any way that that, that can get uh, specified within the next month uh, from well, your the, perspective? As a park, that's what uh, DEP does not want to see, uh, yes. nor do I as a developer, because then there's no control. It, uh, my original thoughts were that, that what afraid me, uh, scared me about the Conservation Commission initially was that they could take this land that I've been pledged to the DEP that I would protect as wetland, then they could fill it in and make a, uh, uh, a ballpark out of it, and I'm in violation. But is there, is there any uh, land within your greened area that uh, could be used in that capacity without filling? Yes. Uh, although I, I'm, I'm not so sure the DEP would allow it. They, will, they would call it wetlands. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a, there's a great soccer field out there, I've got to tell you. So that's really not an option? <laughs> I, I don't think so, unless the, the Land Trust or the Conservation Commission could uh, convince the DEP that it wasn't wetland. But they're calling everything. I mean, this building's built on wetlands. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's all over. Seventy percent of the rest of the state of Maine that's undeveloped is wetland. Seconded to, a, to accept upon satisfactory completion the public roads and pedestrian access easement, the dedication of open space to either the conservation of the land trust and drainage easements within the proposed Broad Cove Highlands subdivision with the following conditions. With the following conditions a paved access road. During the term of construction, access would be from Two Lights Road. That phase one would be constructed first, including a bond or letter of credit guaranteeing the emergency 